Okay, this is the notes for section 1.8, explicit formulas for sequences. Uh, if you haven't done so already, make sure that you've read 1.8. If you haven't, go ahead and stop the video, read it, and then go ahead and start it again. Um, first of all, we're going to look at some terms. The term sequence, what is a sequence? Well, really a sequence is a function. It's just a special type of function. And the, the special type of function that it is is that its domain is a set of positive integers or the set of positive integers from A to B. In other words, it's either positive integers starting with 1, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. on forever, or it could be just the set of positive integers, say, from 1 to 10, or from 6 to 8, or from 12 to 24. So it's always going to be whole positive numbers in terms of the domain. The range could be anything but the domain has to be positive integers. Okay? The term in a sequence is an item or element in a sequence. Really, the term, um, the, the value of a term is the, the dependent variable in, in, the, um, in the sequence, whereas the independent variable or the domain of that sequence is the positive integers. So the term number is the domain. The actual term is the range. Okay. Now, the next thing we have, and this is something we'll be using quite a bit throughout the year, actually, is the idea of a subscript. A and a subscript is a label that is set lower and smaller than the regular text. For example, T and then a little 3 below. That 3 is the subscript and is read T sub 3. So anytime we, we read a subscript number, we'll say sub and then that number. So T sub 3, M sub N, uh, X sub 3, or X sub 5, anything like that. Okay. Finally, uh, in terms of terminology that we have, under the, the idea of writing explicit formulas for sequences, uh, explicit formula for the nth term of sequence is a formula that describes any term in a sequence in terms of its term number. Okay, well, it's kind of hard to understand. First of all, realize that we're talking about an explicit formula. We'll talk about a different type of formula for sequence later in this course. But an explicit formula for a sequence is when you can write a formula in terms of the term number. So in other words, our domain is the term number. Okay, let's look at the uh, first example that you have in your notes there. It says, consider the formula t sub n equal to 3 raised to the n power minus 4. Assuming n is greater than or equal to 1, what are the first four numbers in the sequence defined by this formula? Okay, so n, remember, is your term number. So if I'm finding the first four numbers in that sequence, I'm looking for the first term, the second term, the third term, and the fourth term. So in other words, I'm looking for the, the value of the sequence when n is 1, 2, 3, and 4. So t sub 1 is when n is 1. So I'm going to put in to that function 1 for n. And if I do that, I would have 3 minus 4, which is negative 1. If I'm looking at the second term, n is 2, so I have 3 squared minus 4, which is 5. For the third term, n is 3, which will give me 23. And finally, for the fourth term, when n is 4, I would end up with 77. And then for part b, it says evaluate t sub 10 and explain what it means. Well, t sub 10 is the value of the function when n is 10. Okay? In other words, it's the value of the 10th term within that sequence. And if I do that, if I plug 10 into my sequence, 3 to the 10th minus 4 is 59,045. So that would represent the value of that sequence for the 10th term. All right, let's take a look at example two now. 
if we're going to we're going to in this example we're using explicit formulas for sequence it says Alfonso has invested $750 for one year at 8% annual interest if we use the sequence a sub t is equal to 750 times 1.04 raised to the 2t that represents the value of that money um, after any given uh, number of years. Okay, so T is equal to the number of years that that money has been invested. So our, if you look at that formula, uh, it, it makes a sequence based on uh, years. Okay, so it says if the interest is compounded semi-annually, how much will he have at the end of one year? Okay, so if that's the case, that would be the value of the sequence at a sub 1. So we're going to say 750 times 1.04 raised to the 2 times 1 because t is 1. Well, if I do that, I would, and I could plug that into my calculator, you'll find that that's $811.20. Okay. For part B, it says how much money will Alfonso have at the end of the second and third years, assuming no withdrawals. Okay. Well, everything is exactly the same as in part A. The only difference is now I'm finding the second and third terms instead of the first terms. So instead of 1, I'm going to put 2 in for T. And instead of uh, 1, I'm going to put 3 into T for the third term. Okay. And you can see the values then of, of that money after 2 years being 877.40 and after 3 years 949. $949. Now, each of those I'm, I'm rounding to the nearest cent. Okay? And then finally, part C says, how much money will he have after 10 years, assuming no withdrawals? Okay, well, that would be a sub 10, or the 10th term within the sequence. Okay? So I'm going to plug 10 in for T. And if I do that, I would get $1,643.34. All of this. This whole problem is if we're, if we're doing this as a sequence, remember that t, the time, is limited to years. So what that's saying basically is you can't look at what, what is the value after one and a half years. We're only looking at it at the first year, the second year, the third year, etc., on down the line, every year on its anniversary. Okay, if you could pause the video at this time and just complete guided example number two from page 56. Uh, once you're done with that, go ahead and start the video again and I will um, I'll put the answers on here for you to see. Okay, here are the answers to solution number one. Take a look at yours and see if they match these. If you have any questions, make sure you ask about those in class uh, next time we meet. Okay, so here's the solutions for uh, solution two. Um, so we want to do that on our on our cast. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to my cast. And I, first of all, I, I need to define the function s sub n, which I have here. And then I'm going to I'm going to add a lists and spreadsheets. This one right here, okay, which I've already done. And when I do it, it's going to bring up a blank one of these. You're going to put n up here, and then you want to put the values from one to five. And then right here, you're going to put in s sub n. And when you do that, I'm going to show you what's going to happen there. If I just put in s sub n, it's going to it's going to ask me if I want to do column reference or variable reference. So I'm basically it's asking me, do I want these letters to be n or do I want it to be this variable n? And the answer is I'm looking for the variable reference. So I'm just going to say that. And then it's going to go ahead and plug those numbers in correctly. So here's those values then, which you can see is exactly the same. And then if I want to find the hundredth value, I can just put 100 right here and it will give me that value of the hundredth term. I can expand this out as well. So we can see that. Remember e to the sixth, or e6, that means that I need to move my decimal place over six places to get the actual value of that. 
Okay, so um, that would represent the value of the function uh, for, at 100. So there's the final solutions to the guided example.